Hey everyone, what's going on? My name is Nathan and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use and configure MCP servers with Gemini CLI. So Gemini CLI is the latest AI tool that's officially released by Google just a week ago. I have already covered how to get started with Gemini CLI in my previous video, so if you need a quick intro, you can watch it first. Now in this video, we will focus on how to set up MCP servers with Gemini CLI. If you're not familiar with MCP, then I recommend you to watch my introduction to MCP video, the link is in the description. So if you run Gemini CLI and then type slash MCP, your web browser will probably open and be directed to this MCP documentation. This happens when there is no MCP currently configured in Gemini. If we go back to the terminal here, we can see that there is no MCP servers configured, so Gemini opens the docs. We will change that in a few minutes, but for now, let's go back to the documentation. And here, you can see that to add MCP servers to Gemini, you need to set up a settings.json file which is used by Gemini for storing configurations. Now if we scroll down further, we can see that MCP servers configuration can easily be added to this settings.json file. And that's what we're going to do next. So back in the terminal, you can stop Gemini by running the slash quit command, and then here, go to your home directory by typing cd, which stands for change directory, and then a tiled or wave symbol. This will navigate you to your home directory, and here, you can try to cd to the .gemini folder. Now the dot in front of the Gemini is important, so don't miss it. Press enter, and you are now in that Gemini folder. This folder should be created already when you run Gemini CLI for the first time. Next, type ls-1 to list the content of the directory. The minus one will output one file or folder per line. So press enter, and here you can see the settings.json file that we need to set up MCPs. Next, type code space settings.json in order to open this file in VS Code. And here's the JSON file open in VS Code so that we can edit it easily. If the code command isn't found on your computer, open your VS Code and then press Command Shift P or Control Shift P to open the command palette, and then type install code to have that command available in your terminal. Alright, now that settings.json file is open, we can start adding MCP servers to it. First, let's add the MCP servers config next to the other items here. And that's it! Now what to put inside the MCP servers config totally depends on what MCP you want to use. Each MCP should have their own unique configurations, so I will show you how to install a few of them next. Now before we get into the exciting part, please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on the subscribe button down below, and please help me reach 100,000 subscribers by the end of this year, as it will mean a lot to me, making me feel more excited to create useful videos just like this one. Now, the first MCP that we're going to install will be Firecrawl. Firecrawl is a web scraping service that allows you to power your AI apps with clean data crawled from any website. The Firecrawl MCP is a great way to provide contacts from any website that exists on the internet for the LLM. You can scrape information from a given site and provide relevant details about that site. To install Firecrawl MCP, you can visit its website at firecrawl.dev mcp and then copy the JSON config for cursor as shown here. Back in settings.json, paste the config, and then replace this firecrawl API key value with your own API key. You can get the API key from firecrawl, so back in the website, just click the integrate now button, and you will be directed to firecrawl dashboard. You will be asked to sign up first if you haven't already, and here, just navigate to the API key section, you can create an API key here, Give it a name, and then click create, and then copy the key, and then paste it into the MCP config. Okay, now we can test out Firecrawl, so back in the terminal, run Gemini, and here you can see the MCP is already registered, so if you type slash MCP again, you can see a detailed information of the Firecrawl MCP as shown here. Alright, let's try to use this MCP. So now, I will ask Gemini to scrape the top 10 trending news from Hacker News. Press enter, and then let Gemini think for a while. It will look for a scraping tool that it can use to fulfill the request. And then, it will ask for our permission to run Firecrawl as shown here. We can run the tool once, or allow it always, as shown in these options. I will just allow once here. 
and then after a while it wants to run the file crawl search, so let's just allow it again. And here is the result of the search. I think Firecrawl will get the top 10 news now. Okay, so here's the result given by Firecrawl, the top 10 trending news from the Hacker News website. And that's how you use MCP in a nutshell, let's see how to install another MCP next. Next, we're going to install Context7, a popular MCP server designed specifically for up-to-date documentation. So one of the biggest challenges with large language models is that they have knowledge cut off date. The model only knows information available up until a certain point in time, and anything released after that isn't known by AI. This means they don't always have access to the most recent updates, especially when it comes to newer tools or libraries. This becomes a problem when you're working with software or application that frequently update their APIs. Rather than waiting for LLM providers to retrain their models with the latest documentation, you can use Context7 to bring in up-to-date information directly to the AI. To install Context7, you can add this MCP configuration in the settings.json file. Copy this config, and then paste it in the settings.json file. Once added here, you can activate Context7 specifically by adding use Context7 to the prom. Let me show you how to use it. In this VS Code window, I have a Next.js application already generated, and now I want to add Tailwind CSS to it. So I will open the VS Code terminal, and then type Gemini to run the tool. Now let's ask it to install Tailwind CSS to this Next.js app. Let Gemini think for a while, and then it will respond with a comment to run. But as you can see here, the comment is outdated, because if we open the browser and look into Tailwind documentation, we can see that the packages needed to add Tailwind to Next.js here is different than the one suggested by Gemini. To handle this outdated info, we can cancel the request and then type the same prompt again, but add use context 7 by the end of the prompt. Okay, now Gemini will use context 7 to fetch the latest information about installing Tailwind. Here, it wants to run a tool from Context7, so just allow it. And then after a while, it wants to get the documentation from Context7 as well, so let's allow it again. So Context7 seems to fetching documentation from its uh, database. Okay, now Gemini wants to install new packages. Uh, it seems to miss the post.css package, but that's fine for now, we will add it manually later. Now after the installation is finished, Gemini wants to edit some files so that Tailwind could run. We will just allow these edits. And that's how you use the Context7 MCP in Gemini CLI. Now the post-CSS package isn't installed, so I will add it manually here. I will quit Gemini, and then run npm install post-CSS. Alright, now the package is installed. Now one more thing to keep in mind is that the MCP configuration you set in the settings.json file is actually shared with Gemini Code Assist extension. If you don't know about Gemini Code Assist, you can watch my previous video here that covers how to get started with it. But basically, when you open the Gemini Code Assist window and then type slash MCP, you can see that the same MCP servers are available here. If you like this video and would love to support the channel, you can consider donating to my channel through the super thanks option below. Or you can consider joining my YouTube membership where you can use this channel's emojis, get early access to new videos, plus a lot more. But overall, that's how you can use MCP servers in Gemini CLI. You need to find the settings.json file which is used to store Gemini CLI configuration and then add the MCP servers configuration in that file. You can add as many MCP as you need, and Gemini will use them when it thinks the tool is required, or when you specifically ask to use that tool. Usually, you can just copy and paste MCP servers config to the JSON file, but some MCPs might need extra configuration, such as the Firecrawl MCP that requires an API key. So make sure to check out the instructions for specific MCP servers you want to use before you install them. 
And now we have come to the end of this tutorial. We have learned how to set up MCP servers in Gemini CLI. I hope you all enjoyed today's video and get some value out of it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I will join the conversation and reply as often as I can. If you're new to the channel, Koei Nathan is a channel dedicated to simplify complex tech topics so that you can master them easily. Make sure you subscribe if that's something you find interesting. Make sure you like this video, turn on the notification bell, all the good stuff as it helps this channel to grow. With that being said, thanks again for watching until the end. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in other videos. Bye bye.